this is Ryan Rieger from HK Excel. Uh, so last week, basically, uh, I sent out an email to all of our subscribers, over 2,000 subscribers, and I asked them, okay, so I'm out of ideas for, my next, for our next YouTube video, so I just wanted to know how we can provide more value to IB students. And they said, one of the best suggestions was just to give out general tips for each IB subject. So for today, so I guess I'll start off with talking about economics. I want to give you three tips that I personally have used to ace IB economics. I was I got seven out of seven, right? And over the years, I've helped over 10,000 students online or offline um, to get a level seven in IB economics, okay? So to, in this video, I'm going to just give you three very important tips. The first tip is that you want to uh, find real life examples using the right method. You know, back in high school, uh, some of my teachers told me in economics, they told me, so when, in order to get a good mark in economics, you need to read the newspaper every day. You need to read the financial newspaper, understand about the world economy, right? And even now, uh, some of I hear from some students that they ask me, okay, so my, my teacher told me I should read the newspaper article every day. Is that true? Okay, from my own experience, I can tell you it's, it's a ridiculous suggestion that you need to read the newspaper every day, right? What For me, I didn't do that. Okay, first of all, I, I agree that you need to have real-life examples to get a good mark, but the way in which you learn the real-life example is never by reading the newspaper article every day. I'll tell you why it's not right to read the newspaper every day. So, first off, in IB Economics, actually, in IB Economics is, although it's it's not a very advanced economic cor economics course, right? So, even if you ace IB economics, if you read the newspaper, there there will be a lot of concepts that you don't understand if you read the financial newspaper, that's for sure. Because IB economics just cover a very limited scope, right? So if you read the newspaper every day, like one problem is that you waste a lot of time reading about things that you don't really understand. That's my personal experience. The second part thing is that uh, in order to get a good mark for your IB economics, you don't need that many real life examples. You just need to know a few very important ones, and then that will be fine. You don't like you. It will be a waste of time to you spend so much time reading newspaper article. Okay, so what is the way I would suggest? The way I would suggest you to, to so this is what I do with our students at HKX. So what we do is that, first of all, we look at all the past exam questions, we sort them into different topics, right? So let's say we are said we find all the past paper questions for ADAS, we find all the past paper questions for inflation, all the past paper questions for unemployment. As we go through those questions, we ask ourselves, okay, what are some real life examples I would need to answer this question? And then I go on news.google.com, one of my favorite sites, Google News, and just search search up news that is related to that question. Okay, for example, let's say I'm studying inflation. So a very common question is explain uh, the difference between cost push and demand pull inflation. And you just go on Google News and search demand pull inflation and then you can find an example of a country that is going through demand pull inflation. Okay, so you just need to do that before your test or before your exam. You don't need to do, it, do that every day. And then using news.google.com is definitely very effective because immediately you find the news that you want. The suggestion is that the best way for you to study economics is actually to write out full essays. Okay, I'll tell you why. So let's say a question, because to be honest, right, um, if you look through the past exam questions, actually the questions, there are only, a, there are only that many types of questions they can ask. Okay, so normally <clears throat> every year exam questions can be traced back to exam questions earlier, right? It's very similar. Maybe they just changed their phrasing, but there are a lot of repetition in the past paper. So uh, imagine this. Okay, let's say your your competitor, your your other classmate, um, he does not write full essays. So he only studied the material, and then in the exam, he thinks what to thinks about what to write, and he writes it on the spot. So he sort of sort of have to, to improvise. Okay. But you, if you write essays beforehand, basically, you if you write all write and full essays for all the past exam questions, when you go to the actual exam, you actually just, you don't have to improvise. You just write out what you already wrote when you study. You have the perfect essay. You just need to regurgitate it, really. right? I used this approach myself. And nor, nor, normally during our lessons at HKXL, um, that's what we do. We go through a lot of exam questions, different types, and I teach you how to write it, okay? Now, the third tip I have is that, okay, this is very important. You know, a lot of students, uh, one problem they have is when they answer 15 mark questions, the evaluation questions, they write a very long essay, but then their, their teacher tell them that there's no evaluation. Well, what does that mean? I think evaluation, the most important part, is writing a good conclusion, okay? 
So how, but how do you write a good conclusion? Well, you need to really practice writing conclusions in my own opinion. So there are a few ways to conclude. One is talking about long run, short run. So you can say in the long run that there is this, in the, in the short run there is this, but in the long run there is this. The other one is um, it depends. A lot of times the conclusion depends on the situation, right? Like for example, whether or not a country should subsidize agricultural goods. It depends on the living standards of the citizens and it depends on whether food is affordable, for example. Another one is the government should strike a balance between. Because whenever a government uses a policy, there's always a trade-off. Okay, for example, if a government increases its transfer payments, it gives more pension, then the economic growth is going to slow down. So if you're evaluating such a policy, you can see it is important for the government to strike a balance between this and that. Okay, because a lot of time there are trade-offs, right, in any in, in economic situation. Another thing you can say is, overall so you can just conclude just summarize everything you wrote earlier that is a type way to conclude another way is just to say the benefits outweigh the cost or the cost outweigh the benefits okay um so then so they can make a decision okay so these are the three tips the first tip is you study uh real life scenario real get real life examples in a very smart way using google news second way second tip is to write full essays for the past exam questions before I have the third tip is to practice writing great conclusions okay I hope this uh, video helps you and next very soon I'll shoot similar videos for